this is one of the few companies which are undoubtedly going to keep the EMR pens. We can really see the line wobble there in the remarkable. You just don't get that at all with the EMR pen. I feel like it's been a little while since I just filmed something here on my desk. And well, I've got a bit of a backlog, got a lot to do today, but that's cool. And I thought I'd start here with the pen stars and just make sure I get the newer one on screen with the older one. And I can't actually tell <laughs> just by looking at them because they're very similar in design. I mean, I do know and this bluer one here is the new one and this grayer is the old but the design is so very similar in fact i'm wondering can the folios be used interchangeably i actually think i do prefer the older one the older folio although i see that doesn't quite go with the new color of the back and yeah you can see actually the plastic itself does have a bluer look on the newer device so it is quite clear and you can perhaps see there straight away on the camera that the older screen does have worse contrast. It isn't as white as the newer screen is. I do incidentally quite like the half folio design, but the USP of these is that you can't use your finger on them. They're pen star for a reason. You can only interact with the screen with the pen. And I think you can probably see now there's a difference between those two screens. The older screen being from the era of e-ink, the 227 PPI screens. And this being from the 300 PPI era, if you like. And although at normal reading distance, you won't notice much of a difference, you will if you're inclined to pixel peep. It is a better screen, there's no denying it. And yeah, I'm gonna give this guy the Penstar E Note 1. I'm gonna give this guy away to one of my colleagues at school and I'll look forward to hearing his opinion on using that daily. And I think that'll really suit him actually because what do we need e-ink tablets for? Primarily for me, they're for replacing our notebooks, for replacing our digital planners. And I was able to recommend this as something you should definitely look at at least as a good price for an e-ink tablet with an EMR pen. And you can still pick some of these up for about $320. But coming in now at $400, the newer version, sure, it's not quite Carter 1300, I think it's Carter 1250. Still a very good screen, but not quite the high levels of contrast of the very latest screen. And the Carter 1300 does have slightly better refresh as well, slightly quicker response. Now, I mentioned the USP, the unique selling proposition of these devices that they can only be used for pen and that is to get rid of as many layers as they can on the top of the screen to make the ink appear as close to the surface where the pen nib is as is possible and I applaud that and they've got around the fact you can't interact that by adding this set of buttons which is context aware there's, there's three different menus that you can get whether you're in notes whether you're in reading or just the default menu buttons and you can change these to whichever from this giant list of functions you want. So you can change any of these buttons. If you were to use this daily, you'd really get used to that. To a certain extent I have so far. I would love to see them add a small e-ink display here so you could always quickly see at a glance what those buttons were about to do so that they could be even more context specific. But I don't think it's really necessary to remove the touch layer, especially as the XP pen and the Hueyons of the world, they're actually adding touch layers to their pen displays and they're the best at getting the best quality out of EMR. Now actually Penstar are a part of the Hanvon group or certainly that's where they're buying their technology from and XP Pen are also part of that group and that's why we've got this really cool 8000 level of pressure pen here. That's good EMR technology. But one thing they should definitely focus on doing for their next iteration or even within this iteration is bring a more premium feeling pen because this pen looks nice but doesn't feel nice at all in the hand. <laughs> Honestly, writing with it kind of gives you the kind of cheap plastic biro vibes. Yeah, it's like a big <laughs> biro, not something that you're going to love writing with. So either collaborate with one of the amazing pen makers, get Lamy involved, or take the time to design your own really premium feeling stylus. Good feel with the nib on the page, but bad feel in the hand. However, when you're writing, you can't always see the nib. Oh, 
Almost like the nib has been retracted up inside the body of the pen and I find that a bit off-putting that I can't actually see the exact point my nib is touching the page. Now it is fast enough, the response, the latency as we call it, but it isn't going to blow anything else away. And another thing that I really do like about it, it's very light, it's very comfortable to hold. It is a really notes orientated e-ink tablet. And so therefore it fulfills the three main uses, note taking, reading and writing really quite nicely. There's handwriting recognition on here as well. I haven't actually tried that, this iteration. Good, you can do multiple pages, select all. But yeah, you can see it's not a true AI recognition. It's, yeah, it hasn't got a big biro write, an EMR pun. This is the last generation of text recognition. I think devices need to go to full AI cloud recognition now because it's just so much more accurate. And I do like the buttons to some extent. For instance, I think that's home. Yes. And <laughs> I can go into reading and I can remember where. Oh dear, it's not done well there, has it? See, I've forgotten the button there that I wanted page back and hit home. Ah, it has now sorted it out. So going back into the book, it has actually sorted out. Yeah, the character spacing has been sorted. And of course you can annotate here, add your scribbles to the page, but I want you to pay attention to this annotation here. I've circled the word turning to, and when I now change the font size and I zoom out, still there, still anchored well. Yeah, it's got it. Yeah, it's done quite well actually there. But earlier on, when I zoomed in, maybe that's where it's going to fall apart. Yeah, you can see now it has fallen apart where that was actually, ah, it's back, anchored too. So not perfect, but in one of the views, it was off. But I guess most of the time, you're probably going to live in whatever the kind of comfortable font size and reading view that you're happy with is, and so therefore your annotations will stay put. Nothing to really complain about in the reading menu at all. And you can see it's automatically compiled my pages with annotations as well, so that's useful. Importantly for the future of e-ink tablets though, this is one of the few companies which are undoubtedly going to keep the EMR pens. So, okay, there's very few magnets, and one reason why Remarkable has moved away from an EMR pen is because EMR do get interrupted by magnets, and Remarkable wanted to make sure they've got these very strong magnets to keep their devices firmly in their cases, magnets to hold the pen on the side, for example. And you can't do that very well if you have an EMR pen because the areas where the magnets are, you're just gonna get really wobbly lines. So in my opinion, that's where Penstar can really differentiate themselves. Make sure they've always got the very best pen tech. They are, I think, the only ink tablet with that 8,000 levels of pressure, so that's good. However, when you pick up and actually use the pen, you get that disappointment of the quality of that pen. I have always liked, though, you get the spare nibs carried with in there that's really quite cool and lots within the packet as well but yeah if only i didn't feel like i was working with a cheap pen i was actually working with something that felt as good as it looks just honestly make the same design but out of metal and you'll be away and in fact my hand was tied just after this kind of short session of writing these notes so I will look forward to seeing more. I think there's loads that they can do in the future to really keep improving this. I obviously did my slow diagonal lines test and you can see that's much better than any USI stylus would be. And I also did that with the ruler. And it's pretty good, very low, not a lot of wobble at all. And this is because this type of EMR Pentec doesn't just have 8,000 levels of pressure. It also has about 5,000 lines per inch of accuracy. And that's really important. It means that the pen is more accurate than the screen you're drawing on. Whereas capacitive styluses, they are only as accurate as the pixel grid which is picking up the touch. In a USI stylus, they're only accurate to the same resolution as the screen. So in this case, with the Remarkable, it's 260 pixels per inch. That leads to less accurate vector positioning. And if you can zoom in on this, we should still see lovely straight lines and we should still see accurately placed pen. Whereas zooming right in on the Remarkable, you can perhaps see some wobble in the circles there. Yeah, it's just not as accurate can see we're like a bunch of straight lines linking together to make this O rather than a more accurately def defined curve there with the EMR pen. It's 
worth mentioning. Now, at some point I will come back to this and I will daily drive it, but I'm currently testing the Remarkable Move and I must say I'm really enjoying it. So the pen itself isn't putting me off entirely using this device, no doubt about that. But coming from the Move with its array of really nice pen tools, I really like the ballpoint pen, for instance, the way it makes a kind of mark like the way a ballpoint dries out when you've got low pressure and then a firmer mark when you press in. And sure, you've got good pen options here. You can really see the line wobble there in the Remarkable. You just don't get that at all with the EMR pen. Although you've got some good options and I've settled on this pen here. Not so keen on the dip pen, for instance. I didn't really like the ballpoint I started with. You can see that one didn't do so well. Oh, it has a scribble to erase, I did not know that. So pen, line size five is working just fine. Yeah, here it is, AI scribble erase. And look, you can have some quick access buttons, pen, sorry. But you still have to do the drop down to get those. And it does have a pencil, but the pencil is nowhere near the quality of the pencil on the Remarkable. If you could transplant those tools from the Remarkable here, onto the pen style would be a much better writing experience. So I would also recommend they work on their pen tools as well. So that's my advice for them. And they're certainly a company to watch. And a few things keep me a bit excited about that. They could really hone in on this USP of being the best for using a pen. Having the EMR when other companies are leaving EMR behind in favor of the probably more easy, more accessible, in some cases faster, USI stylus technology, capacitive pens which need charge on the side, if they can make their pen experience the best. And still, as is not the case in other notes focused devices, they have speakers and microphones here on the pen star. You don't get that on your super note, for instance. Then that could differentiate them in the market. They are a whole lot cheaper, for instance, as well than the super note is. And yes, you can install apps, but there's no Google Play Store here. And one other thing, notice when you open the pens, you do get a color palette as well. Same color palette that they use with Kaleido Free. So I wonder if there's going to be a color pen star in the future. And you know, the battery life is really good as well. It's a 6,500 milliamp hour battery, which is surprising they've managed to cram that in and keep it so light. And they quote 120 days on standby, which actually makes sense because I charged this to 100 just recently and then have left it for about three or four days and it's only gone down like 3%. So that's quite good. And that is worth mentioning because just like a notebook, you might write something down here on let's say a Friday afternoon and want to leave it on your desk and on Monday morning, come back to it and just know that it's not going to have drained a lot of its battery and required charging there. These things are notebook replacements, so you want to be able to treat them as much as possible like a notebook. You don't want another thing in your life that you have to charge every night. I think for now, it's a good one to watch and I look forward to covering their devices in the future. Thanks very much once again to Penstar for working with me. It's a pleasure to evaluate your devices for my audience. Thanks so much. And unlike some other new players in this industry, they were really good about just sending out their device with no strings attached, just to say, we'd love to hear your feedback. And if you'd like to make some content for your audience, then please do. Because it's a flipping minefield as I'm discovering more and more as you go through these things that uh, once you receive the same marketing offers and the same emails that are going out to much larger media companies, you realize the difficulty that we have in what we can trust and what we can't trust. What is using the marketing lines just verbatim from the communications that they're getting. And it's really difficult because with YouTubers, we hold ourselves to such high standards and you guys in the audience hold us to such high editorial standards. And yet established outlets, they clearly don't have that same standards or because they're so big, I'm sure within their editorial standards, they're note about how they work. I'm sure it's all written down how they interact with brands, but yeah, some reviewers who claim to be trusted or guides to things, authorities, you wonder how they've arrived at the editorial decisions that they have. And it isn't purely through testing and sharing their opinions. I don't know if I needed to say any of that, but here it is at the end of a pen star video. So uh, maybe it's useful for you in understanding how this all works.